Hello, it's Scott Manley here. About one year ago today, the Nunseratu Sat spacecraft was launched on board a Falcon 9 rocket. As a secondary payload, there was the Israeli moon lander Bereshit. And of course, most of you know that it did not, in fact, soft land on the moon. Instead, it smashed into the moon at about 3,000 kilometers per hour. And given that one year has passed since that initial launch, many of you have been asking me, have there been any updates to explain why this happened? What went wrong with this attempt? Well, we haven't seen any official report, and I would have loved to have got more information. What I have had is a few different sources on specific problems, and just recently, an article was published in an online, uh, you know, Israeli website, which does go into a bit more detail. However, it is in Hebrew, and I don't really know how much you can trust this website. However, I think it's worth talking about what they they say. We did know that early in the flight, the star trackers were found to be getting dazzled by the sun. Now, the star trackers are obviously supposed to point at stars and track them, and that means they have to have sunshades around them so that they can point near to the sun, find the bright stars, and not, uh, you know, get not get distracted by the sun. Uh, and it appears that they were having trouble. This has apparently been attributed to dust from the initial stage separation getting uh, stuck to the sun shields. And that meant that when that caught the sunlight, it was so much brighter than the stars that the star trackers were essentially useless. The star trackers would work fine if they were pointed in the correct direction where this wasn't a problem. And so they had to redesign many of the maneuvers just to make sure the spacecraft was rotated with the star trackers away. This wasn't always possible. In those cases, they would have to take uh, known good orientations with the star trackers, rotate to their burn attitude, and then use the inertial guidance units to make sure that they maintained their orientation. Now, the gyroscopes aren't necessarily as accurate as the star tracker. In fact, they're not. But, you know, it would still be accurate enough for them to perform the burn. After all, the most important thing is the delta V, and that was going to be generated or, re you know, measured using the IMU's accelerometers. This did add some workload for the team. And as I understand it, they had to load some patches into the computer memory to make sure the computer understood this new star tracker behavior. A couple of days after launch, they also had a setback when a planned orbit raising burn didn't happen due to a computer reboot. So the orbit raising burn takes place at Perigee, and at Perigee they were too close, there wasn't any, any uh, ground station, so they had to load the commands into the computer. And the problem is, as you come down, you come down through the Van Allen belts, and it's believed that the radiation levels in there... As they are high, they cause the computer to reboot, and so when it woke up, it wasn't ready to perform the burn. They were able to work around this and make another burn later and continue on their way to the moon. But it was an early indication that some of the cost-cutting measures they had made to make sure that they could launch this mission on a budget were perhaps affecting the performance. There was no backup computer. And of course, depending upon your mission design, you can get away with a single computer if it reboots and restarts very, very quickly. After all, Apollo 11 had exactly this problem during reset, re uh, descent. The whole spacecraft in general had been built with very little redundancy. One thing that was redundant was the inertial measurement units, the, gy the gyroscopes and the accelerometers. Also, according to this article, the accelerometers in the IMU were not space rated. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't work, it just means that you're obviously taking a bit more risk. So anyway, we knew much of this already from other sources. This new article uh, covers a couple of things. First of all, they talk about how they patched some of the behaviors in computer in the computer software by essentially loading stuff into RAM after the uh, computer booted up. So they would add a command file that would load new behaviors. For example, don't point the star tracker at this part of the sky because you will be blinded. These software extensions would be loaded by a process that would check every minute to make sure they were loaded. If they were called before that, the computer would have a problem and you know, might have to wait or reboot again. So anyway, the spacecraft makes its way to the moon. The team are solving a lot more problems. They're getting a lot less time to practice and simulate their actual descent. Then on the big day, during the descent, they're doing their slow, they're slowing down. The IMUs are working very hard. And as they get close, one of the IMUs fails or shuts down. 
Now in theory, it should have been able to proceed with just one working IMU, but it, when this one shut down, it also blocked communications from the other IMU. The computer then wasn't getting navigation data for sufficiently long that it decided that something was up and it should reboot itself. And as part of the reboot, the main engine shut down so they were no longer slowing on their descent towards the surface of the moon. And also, the reboot then failed. It would come back up, there were missing software extensions, so it tried to do stuff and then it forced itself into another reboot. Apparently, it rebooted five times and the engine was not working during any of these sequences. But here's the kicker, even if it had restarted, there was apparently a problem that had been discovered prior to launch where the computer could come up and try to start the engine but not give it power from both uh, the power sources that it was supposed to. Uh, and this is, again, probably lost in translation, but it sounds like this was a known problem. This engine had to get power from you know two different circuits and it was only getting power from one of those, so the engine wasn't starting. Uh, so after that computer rebooted due to that IMU failure, they were on their way to the surface and they had no time, there was no way for them to stop. And so they failed to land on the moon, but they did make a nice new crater, which of course we were able to see later thanks to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Now, this article, I, I don't think is written particularly well. Certainly I don't know Hebrew, so I, I don't know if there's any subtlety that's missing from it. I've had a translation from somebody else that kind of lines up with Google Translate with a few differences. Uh, but I would love to see official reports on this. I'd love to know exactly how the interaction between the computer and the IMU and the extensions led to this and specifically if they really did know that the engine couldn't relight so quickly after a computer reboot. Uh, but yeah, it's been one year since they dared to start on this great trek to the moon with a very lightweight and simple spacecraft and I think it's sad that it ended in a failure, but I think it's great that, you know, people dare these mighty things. And as I've said, space is hard, getting to the moon is harder, on landing on the moon is harder still, and the moon's surface is very, very hard when you hit it at 3,000 kilometers per hour. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.